Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank each of you for joining with us for Charlene's Outreach Ministries Sunday School Bible Study. Amen. <clears throat> we have a wonderful and powerful lesson, Unlocking the Surprising Power of the Gospel. Unlocking the Surprising Power of the Gospel. And our lesson is coming from Romans 1, verses 16 and 17. Yes, you heard me correct. It's two verses. Romans 1, verses 16 and 17. Powerful lesson that we'll move into. As we look at the lesson for today, we are diving to, into something that's truly exciting. The surprising power of the gospel. This isn't just in any, any message. It's the key to unlocking a life of profound transformation and divine strength. Let's explore how this power can and will change everything in our life if we will allow it to. Amen. As we get ready to move forward in this lesson, I want to bring up a subject, the fellowship of the unashamed. As we move into this lesson, it has been said that a pastor in Zimbabwe over a hundred years ago, had written a note uh, because the pastor was about to be martyred. He written a note to a group of people that had formed and it is still active today. The fellow and is known as the Fellowship of the Unashamed. This lesson includes Paul speaking about not being ashamed. So we will uh, read that note that he left at the end of this lesson. Amen. I pray you'll be looking forward to that. As we move into the lesson, what does it mean to each of us today to not be ashamed of the gospel? What does that mean in our life? How does it stand up? Does it mean that we are not afraid to, to tell someone that we, we, that we are Christians? Or does it mean that we are unafraid to tell people that we don't do everything that they do, that we don't go places that they go? Are we afraid to, to, to uh, not do things because it is not uh, of Christian character? Where do we stand in our walk with God in being unashamed of the gospel? As we are unlocking the surprising power of the gospel, coming from Romans 1, 16 to 17, that just live by faith. <clears throat> we're going to have prayer, then we're going to move right into this powerful lesson. Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Father. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us, those seen and unseen, Father. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for watching over us, leading us, and guiding us in your true path of righteousness. Father, we thank you for all that you have done, is doing, and you shall do in each of our lives. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to go with us and stand by us. Show us the way to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for forgiveness of our sins as we forgive those that trespass against us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, as we go into your word, we pray that you would open our eyes that we see and our ears that we hear and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high as we study and meditate on your word, Father, knowing that each person that at the sound of my voice and whenever this is heard, Father, receives something specific for their life in this lesson, Father. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that their hearts is tender and pliable and ready to receive in Jesus' mighty name. Father, as we get ready to close this prayer, Father, we Declare healing, deliverance, protection, and guidance over each and every person at the sound of my voice and when this is heard, Father. Lord, your word says by your stripes we are healed. And we stand on that word that we are healed mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially in the name of Jesus. And we believe it, your word, Father, and we stand on it in the name of Jesus. And we are doers of your word and not hearers only. That we shall go forth and receive what we have uh, requested of healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, as we get ready to move into this lesson, uh, unlocking the surprising power of the gospel. Amen. Uh, Romans 1, verses 16 and 17. 
Verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. As we look here in this passage of scripture, Paul, number one, is writing this, this, this letter to the Romans. And we know who Paul is. Paul is the one that was Saul, the one that destroyed the Christian. But now uh, Paul is a man of God. He is a, a, a true uh, a, a man of God going forth and, and preaching the gospel and, and, and saving souls. And, and so as we look at Paul and he stands up and says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. We know for a fact that out of the things that he has stood for and has dealt with, that he's not ashamed of the gospel, that he has been beat, that he has been uh, bit by snakes, that he has been shipwrecked, but he continues to go. And he uh, has been in jail and been put back in jail on, on several occasions. And he still is not ashamed of the gospel. Paul knows how to keep first things first. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. That should convict each of us. Though we say we believe the gospel, in truth, many of us are ashamed of it. Why? Because we don't really believe what Paul believed, that the gospel is the power of God for salvation, something that we must have. Paul's declaration of not being ashamed of the gospel also serves as a powerful example of spiritual boldness for believers. Embracing this unashamed attitude can lead to greater confidence in sharing our faith, impacting our lives and others, and standing firm in our convictions even in the face of adversity. The Apostle Saul, Saul Paul is asserting here that the gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ is for all people. He says it's for the Jew first, which reflects the historical context. We know that in that time, in Acts and during their time, and even Paul, when he went out, he would always go to the Jew first and then to the, the, to the uh, Gentile. And said Jesus was born into a Jewish family, and the Jewish people were the initial recipients of God's teaching, of Jesus' teaching, and also to the Greek. Borden's uh, this message to all non Gentiles and also to the Greek showed that the, the, it is brought this message to uh, all non-Gentiles as well, emphasizing the university of the Christian faith, knowing that uh, Peter, uh, one of the, the lead uh, pastor in, in, in of the disciples, had brought forth that the Gentiles would be saved just as the Jew. This salvation is not merely for believers from hell, but also for the deliverance of believers from the temporal wrath of God against sin. If we are ashamed to share the gospel, it's because we do, do not understand the power embedded in it. We also do not understand that Jesus also said that if we be ashamed of him, he will deny us in front of his father. It's, but we, but how can we be ashamed of something with so much power? The power that 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 uh, Jesus uh, showed to us when He was raised from the dead. How can we be ashamed of such power and the and the work that has been done? It's that if we believe that the gospel have power not only to save sinners but also to give victory to saints, we won't be ashamed of it. We'll stand strong in the will and the word, in the word of the Lord. Verse 17 says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Paul had confidence in the gospel that, that in it the righteousness of God was revealed. The word righteousness shows to be right, 
not better than others, are good enough, but right as in right with God. Our problem is that we merely mentally dumb down God, reducing him to our level so that our sins doesn't seem so bad. I didn't, it, it, it was just a little sin, but there's no such thing as a little sin in God's eyesight. The gospel, though, through, uh, though makes God's righteousness the standard. So it doesn't matter how nice of a sinner you are or we are. We are still a sinner and we will not go get into the kingdom. The gospel, however, doesn't just reveal the standard. It also gives us a provision. The righteous will live by faith. It said, <clears throat> nothing, uh, I said, if we appeal to our relative goodness, we'll always fall short. But if we appeal to God by faith and the finished work of Christ, then the gospel has already saved us. Think of it this way. If you, if you can't afford a house, but a generous oil barren person uh, puts up his bankroll for you, does it matter that I only have $85 in my bank account? No. My finances are irrelevant. He bought the house for me. I'm dependent on his resources, and he can afford it. That's what the gospel is like. God has resources available for every believer who lives by faith. The act of faith in the finished work of Christ justifies us. And it is the lifestyle of faith that sanctifies and transforms us. We receive Christ's justifying righteousness by faith. And we grow in righteousness when we yield obediently by faith to the Lord's authority in our lives. Through the Holy Spirit, through the unctioning of the Holy Spirit, as we uh, uh, yield to the unction of the Holy Spirit, we shall receive and go forward in our faith. It is quoted from Habakkuk 2 and 4. Paul cites this Old Testament verse to underline that living by faith is not a new concept. It wasn't just started in his day, but one deeply rooted in God's interaction with his people. It connects the doctrine of justification by faith alone apart from the law, to the larger biblical narrative. As we look at how what faith is, we need to know that faith must have uh, uh, we have works, but not works to be saved, but works because we are saved. The Bible pre presents faith as something we do, something we work at, a process. We go from faith to faith as we... Uh, get stronger in God, we go from one uh, level of faith to the next level of faith. The process we, that we put our own energy into by uh, receiving and believing his word and walking out his word and doing his word, and as we grow stronger in the word and continue to do his word, then our faith grows and grows. It's that throughout our life, even at the very onset of the Christian life, we see that faith is one response in a chain response, which you we, we which we make to the gospel. This uh, faith, this uh, response of faith, it, it, the scriptures tell us that God gave each of us a measure of faith that we may have the opportunity to build on it if we desire. But as the scripture said, Amen. If, if you don't use something then you will lose it. Amen? So we must make sure that we're using the faith that we have been given. In verse 17, it says, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. How does this progression of faith manifest in our daily life? Is if we walk it out, if as the Holy Spirit unction us to speak to someone, to be a blessing to someone, However, the Holy Spirit unction us, then as we go forward and grow from uh, area to area, then the Holy Spirit said, well, they'll follow me with this, then I'm going to speak to them on something else. And the more that we, are, we get, the closer we get to the Father and to the Holy Spirit, then we can hear and receive messages and that we will know what the Holy Spirit wants us to do at any given time. It, we can share moments when, when our faith... Uh, 
as we think about moments in time when our faith uh, in the gospel has guided us and transformed us or lifted us up. I know that uh, many times that uh, 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 through the Holy Spirit that I have been told to stop or to go and, and, and with me being obedient at the time, I was able to uh, sometimes prevent accidents, sometimes prevent uh, 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 causing severe harm or danger in my life. So following the unction of the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth. As we get ready to close this lesson, we want to reflect on the words of Paul in Romans. We are reminded that the righteous shall live by faith. This isn't just a call to believe, it's a call to live. Every day, every moment, faith is our guide, our substance, our substance and our strength. It's not merely about believing in the truth of the gospel, but about letting that truth transform every aspect of our lives. How is that as we study and meditate on the word and do the word that we're reading and studying and meditate, then we grow in our faith. Now, I want you to make a take as we take a moment to consider, are there areas in our life where we are holding back, where we are not stepping all, all the way in? Perhaps there are aspects where we, we've not fully embraced the power of the gospel. It might be a situation at work, a relationship, or even a personal struggle. Wherever we find ourselves hesitating, remember the gospel is powerful enough to bring change and to bring healing and to bring salvation to our life. Let us not keep this powerful truth at arm's length. Let us live a life, let us not live a life half transformed. The gospel is not just for Sundays. It's for every decision, every challenge, every victory. Let it fully enter our hearts, our homes, and our thoughts, and our actions. So with this call to deeper faith, we're going to get ready and go into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We come before you acknowledging our need for your power in our lives. As your word says, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, grant us the courage to live unashamedly for you. Help us to grasp the depth of your gospel and not just a con as a concept, but as the active driving forces in our lives. Father, where fear has made us timid, Father, bring boldness. Father, where, uh, uh, where doubt has caused hesitation, Father, we ask you to bring conviction in our soul. Father, where our own strength has faltered, let your divine power give us the strength to go forward. Lord, we ask for faith that does not waver in the face of trials, faith that grows from faith to faith and from strength to strength. Lord, make us a people who live by faith, who are known by you, our faith, and who inspire faith in others by our unwavering trust and spirit in you, Father. In the powerful and precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. This was a powerful lesson. And as I stated at the beginning of this lesson, I am going to read The Fellowship of the Unashamed that was written by a pastor that was martyred in uh, Zimbabwe in Africa, I believe that is, uh, for the namesake of the Lord Jesus. And this was a uh, a hundred years ago. So that means it was much further past the Paul's, Paul's and all the apostles' uh, life cycle. So, uh, 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 and scriptures were, uh, uh, New Testament had been written, I believe, during that time. New Testament has begun to, begin to come forth. It says, the fellowship of the unashamed. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed, he writes. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of his. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. 
My future is secure and I'm finished with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tamed visions, worldly talking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, plaudity, or popularity. I don't have to be right. First, tops, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. I now live by faith, lean on his presence, walk by patience, am uplifted by prayer, and labor by power. My, pay, my pace is set, my gait is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, and my way is rough. My champion, my companions few, and my guide is reliable, and my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of the adversary, negotiate at the table of the enemy, Panda, pander at the pool of popularity or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, let up, until I've stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, preached up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus. I must go till he comes, give till I drop, preach till all know and work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he'll have no problem recognizing me. My banner will be clear. His Jehovah Nisi as his banner. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Powerful and wonderful lesson. I pray you meditate on this powerful lesson. And remember, don't be ashamed of the gospel. God bless you.